All right, we're in uh, Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 8. And we're starting at verse 1. So Yahuwah said to me, take a large tablet and write on it with a man's pen. For Maher Shalal Hashbaz, there's a note here for that. It means quick to plunder, swift to pray. I felt like we read this. Um, pause. All right. So uh, this, this uh, phrase here, Maher Shalal Hashbaz, means quick to plunder, swift to pray. Unless somebody has something different, feel free to share that. And I will take for myself faithful witnesses to testify. Uriah, the priest, and Zechariah, the son of Yerberekiah. I went to the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then Yahuwah said to me, call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz, again, which means quick to plunder, swift to pray. For before the child knows how to say, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried away by the king of Assyria. Yahuwah spoke to me yet again, saying, because this people has refused the waters of Shiloh, that go softly and rejoice in Rezin, or Rezin, and Ramalia's son. Now, therefore, behold, uh, the Lord, I guess Adonai, the master, brings upon them the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria, and all his glory. Is that Yahuwah there? Because I want to say Yahuwah if it's Yahuwah. Nope, it's just Adonai. Okay. Mighty flood waters of the river the king of Assyria and all his glory, it will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. Oh, hands up. My apologies. I'm not looking up. JP. Go ahead, brother. Oh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, one thing I was, I just want to bring up is kind of like a fun fact, but the name Maher Shalahaz Baz it says it's the longest name and word in the scripture. So that was kind of cool, you know. And then it also says that he's the second son of Isaiah. Um, that was just a fun fact, I guess, I just wanted to bring up. But right on. Uh, the verse 8, 7 in my translation here that shows the Strong's numbers, it shows that it says, Now therefore behold Yahuwah, because there where it says Yahuwah is H3068, bringeth upon them. Because uh, I think you were saying if yours was saying Adonai or Lord. Yeah, in the uh, Masoretic text, it's H136. Oh, okay. That's interesting. No, I just want to get that yeah, out. Of, see what that was about. Uh, I don't know what other source you could use. Because uh, right. the Septuagint is Greek. So it's, I mean, unless, uh, I'm, 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 I have to double check if the Septuagint capitalized, capitalizes, oh my goodness, capitalizes the letter K in the Greek word curios, curios for Lord, to, mm. to um, let us know it's speaking of the Tetragrammaton, the Father's name, but I'm not sure. But I know in the Septuagint, it, it, doesn't, have the, it doesn't have the Tetragrammaton. It just says curios, which is the word for Lord. That's interesting. So, okay. but if it, does, if it does have the capital K, then, then it would be uh, Yahuwah, but I'm not sure if they capitalize or not. I know in Greek they do. There is a capitalization and a lower case of letters. So that's, that would be interesting to look into. Um, obviously, I think it is talking about Yahuwah, obviously, because he's the one that brings mighty floodwaters. Um, you know, bare minimum, he can use an angel or some type of heavenly messenger to cause it, right? I don't think that's far-fetched either. Um, but uh, definitely Yahuwah doing it. Um, verse eight. So this uh, this destruction that's happening, flood waters, um, the king of Assyria and all his glory, it will come up over all its channels and go 
over all its banks. And there is, hold on, going back to six. Because this people has uh, refused the waters of Shal uh, Sh Shalawa. We'll look into that real quick. This is H7975. Means scent, from what I see in here, in the BDB. A fountain just southeast of Yerushalayim. All right. Obviously, we're dealing with the prophets here, so a lot of this stuff is probably going to be very symbolic of things. If anybody has the answers to any of these, feel free to share. Um, for the people refuse the waters that are by Jerusalem, that go softly and rejoice in resin. I think we talked about this a little bit on the previous uh, recordings. It's uh, King of Damascus during the reigns of King Yotham and Ahaz of Yehuda. And another definition is a progenitor of a family of temple servants who returned from captivity with Zerubbabel. I think it's the first definition, the, the King of Damascus. That's what we've been reading about. Uh, and Ramaliaz, this is uh, protected by Yahuwah, father uh, of King Pekah of the northern kingdom of Yisrael. Just a little information there. So because this people has refused the waters of Shalawah that go softly and rejoice in Retzin and Ramia's son, now therefore behold, Yahuwah brings upon them uh, the mighty flood waters of the river, the king of Assyria, and all his glory. It will come up over all its channels and go over all its banks. It will sweep onward into Yahuda. It will overflow and pass through. It will reach even to the neck. The stretching out of its wings will fill the width of your land, Emmanuel. And uh, we discussed this a little bit in the previous recording, but it's almost like that Emmanuel is almost, uh, I, this is where I stood on it. It's um, a stamp. It's like Yahuwah's stamp because Emmanuel is the name, but it's also a phrase, right? So, yeah, um, Elohim is with us, right? So I kind of saw that as a Elohim is with us, almost like maybe don't be afraid. You know, Yahuwah is with us. This calamity is coming, but for the righteous, this is a don't be afraid. I don't, that's how I was taking it, but others were taking it as, you know, Emmanuel is the name of of uh, one of the sons of uh, Isaiah. Verse nine, make an uproar, you peoples, and be broken in pieces. Listen, all you from far countries, dress for battle and be shattered. Dress for battle and be shattered. Take counsel together, and it will be brought to nothing. Speak the word, and it will not stand. For Elohim is with us. There it is. For me, that's the Emmanuel. Um, I'm curious to see what that looks like in the interlinear real quick. Just for fun. It's probably different. No, it's Emmanuel. Oh, look, the translator decided to put the phrase rather than the actual transliteration. See, that's, that's, that's all on the translator. It all depends on whatever their theology is. So I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, it's Emmanuel. Same thing. H410, which is L, and H5973, which is Emmanuel, or however you want to interpret, transliterate that. Interesting. Verse 11, for Yahuwah spoke this to me with a strong hand and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people. That's the common theme. Like I said, guys, if, any, if we don't understand anything of what we're reading, at least get Yahuwah wants us to obey him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, let's get the heart of these stories. You know, you have rebellious people who rebel against Yahuwah, and then they get consequences and punishments. And then you have the righteous remnant that are always part. They're always somewhere involved in the chaos, but Yahuwah preserves them and Yahuwah still acknowledges them as righteous and as children. Okay. But, you know, sometimes we're in the midst of the chaos because of what the wicked has done. 
For Yahuwah spoke to, this, to me with a strong hand and instructed me not to walk in the way of this people, saying, Do not say a conspiracy concerning all about which this people say, a conspiracy, neither fear their threats nor be terrorized. Well, how do you guys take that verse, verse 12? How do you guys take that? I'm going to go to another translation to see how it reads. I'm going to dumb it down, real dumb it down. Basic English. Do not say it is, it is set apart about everything of which this people says. It is set apart. No, I don't agree with this translation because that word conspiracy there, H7195, conspiracy, treason, unlawful so it's not holy so this is something bad this word here kesher um does anybody have any thoughts on this what is this saying here do not say conspiracy every time these people say the word don't be afraid of what scares them don't be terrified jp oh uh i don't know who went first roy or jp my bad JP and then Roy, go ahead. Uh, just a quick, I just wanted to say my translation says, say not a confederacy mm -hmm. to all of them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear you their fear nor be afraid. Uh, so I was kind of like, I felt like that was a big jump. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Confederacy to, you know, what you, what you said. Conspiracy. Treason, conspiracy, that's kind yeah, of. There is, there is a big difference there. I don't, I don't know <laughs> who. How do you choose which yeah. one is the right definition? But conspiracy and that. conspiracy do seem to be two different kinds of words. Yeah, though. yeah. For sure, though, brother. That's all I want to mention. Uh, Lillian, you have something on that? Yeah? I'm going to unmute your mic because I got to unmute. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I just have a King James, and it says a confederacy, and it's underlined. And then down below, it says conspiracy. And I'm so it's saying like that's the meaning of that word in it, but um, maybe, I'm kind of maybe because King James is old English, right? Maybe confederacy back Just in the mean that. Days. yeah, because that's that's one of the things with the KJV guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's old English here. Yep, and I'm not a I, I'm not a proponent for that. I just I, I had to get used to it because I thought it was supposed to, and now I like it. But <laughs> gotcha. but I was gonna say um, to me what it, what I'm having a hard time kind of keeping up with what this prophecy is about. But I think it's saying, you know, because in this new movement of people coming into truth, you know, and coming out from the lies. We're treated as we're in a cult. We're the conspiracy theorists. We're, and it's like, don't fall for that. To keep seeking truth is kind of what it's speaking to me right now. All right. All right. Uh, let's go with Roy and then Artis. Um, but I have a feeling, Artis, you're going to respond to kind of what we're talking about. Roy, do you mind if I go to Artis first? Because I think he's going to piggy bank, right? Artis, you're going to piggy bank on what we're talking about right now? Or you got something different? Go ahead. You got to unmute yourself. Uh, dealing with the same thing, Confederacy is what okay, it is. Okay, cool. Go ahead. What it says in uh, mine. But I'm thinking, um, what, from from my understanding, as we go back up to 11, it says, For the Lord, for Yah, spake to us with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way. Yah, he says, walk in the way of this people, saying. And then, then it goes on to tell you what he's saying. Which is which? Which from what I'm what I'm getting out of it, it's saying do not syndicate yourself with these people. Don't don't uh to these people. Don't um don't basically be like them. He's saying fear him. Don't fear what they fear. You know what I'm saying? Don't syndicate yourself to them. Association, coalition. You know, uh, put in many different words, but I'm thinking that's what it's it's saying. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Brother Roy? Um, no, you touch on it. It was Confederacy, uh, King James Version. Um, I'm thinking that this passage is speaking about something that's going to happen, a battle, literally. That's, that's what I got to say. All right. Uh, let's see here. Ezzy, go ahead. Yeah, so I looked up uh, the word in... 
Strong's and the, the etymology of the word goes back to H7194, which means um, to tie physically or mentally. Um, it also goes in to say to bind or confine, to be bound, to bind fast, to bind to oneself. So it's almost like repeating um, not to be, you know, conformed to those that don't fear Elohim. So it is more confederacy the way we would think of confederacy as in making an alliance. Right, an unlawful you. alliance. Yeah, Unlawful alliance, it goes with that definition. Interesting. Thank you for doing the, uh, the, uh, or the, what is it, the root word? Yeah, that was good. Very good. Nice. Um, who else had their hands up? Uh, JP, I think you put your hands down. Alicia Ma, I'll go to you. Okay, so I'm using the Esword Bible. Okay, which is a good Esword is nice. Um, and I, I, I'm on into the compare uh, kind of applet. Okay. I, I, I'm going to use the Darby. Okay. Which, uh, it's, it's okay. It says, ye shall not say conspiracy of everything which these people say conspiracy, and okay. fear not what they fear. So it's basically whatever they say is a conspiracy, don't think that it is a conspiracy yourself. And whatever they fear, you yourself not fear. So that's the way that I see it uh, here. And also in the God's word, um, the JW verse, and it says here, don't say that everything these people call a conspiracy is a conspiracy. Don't fear what they fear. Don't let it terrify you. So that's just, uh, you know, it's almost the same. There's, I could probably find some similarity into it. It's don't come in agreement, right? With these people is at the end of the day, that's what seems to be the two sides, the conspiracy yeah. and the conspiracy is like coming in agreement. But it does have a, there is a distinction between the two, which is, um, you know, I'm not a hundred percent sure how to decipher between choosing which one. But I, I, would, I would say in, for all of us to be in agreement, it's definitely not to come in agreement with these people, <laughs> uh, just to be fair. Um, anybody else before I continue reading? Lillian, did you have something else? Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I was just gonna say, I think it really is the same because when we choose to believe lies like they do, we're joining ourselves to that and that's the direction we're gonna go in this life. So I think no matter how you look at it, it's, I mean, it is what it is. So <laughs> it's truth, however you. Right on. <laughs> Just a little nugget for all of us. Not every conspiracy is true. Right, right. <laughs> There's a lot of conspiracies on YouTube. Yeah. Be careful. That's all I'm going to say on that. Um, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 8. And uh, verse 13 now. Everyone's muted. Yep. All right. Yahuwah of armies is who you must respect as set apart. He is the one you must fear. He is the one you must dread. He will be a sanctuary, but for both houses of Yisrael, both houses, there's the two house reference right there. He will be a stumbling stone and a rock that makes them fall. For the people of Yerushalayim, he will be a trap and a snare Many will stumble over it, fall, be broken, be snared, and be captured. I think we discussed this a little bit on the previous video. I, again, we went ahead. Uh, we went to Isaiah chapter 8. And I think, um, I know for me, I took this as uh, um, this rock uh, being Yahusha. Yahusha is the stumbling stone. We have some cross references there. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Romans 9.33, even as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, and no one who believes in him will be disappointed. That's Isaiah 8.14, also Isaiah 28.16. Um, let's see here. We have another stone reference here. 1 Peter 2, 7, for you who believe, therefore, is the honor. But for those who are disobedient, quote, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. A little different. 
Psalms 118, 22. Um, and the next verse of 1 Peter chapter 2, it says, and a stumbling stone and a rock of offense. That one is the one that connects with Isaiah 8, 14. For they stumble at the word. See, so the rock is the word and the word is Yahusha. Being disobedient to which also they were appointed. One more passage I want to share regarding this. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to pause. Where is it? Matthew. Might as well just do it right here. Pause again. John 14. I'm going to look up counselor. There it is. I'm going to go here. Let's check this out. Watch this. All right. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with you. Let me go a little bit before that. Uh, verse 22. Now all this happened that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Yahuwah through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted Elohim with us. All right, that's from uh, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It's also in uh, chapter 8, which we read today. Where is it at? Where is it at? Um... I'm going to go to nine. Sorry, I can't find it in eight. Uh, but it's here in nine. For, uh, for a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty, Mighty L, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Um, and then I went to John 14. I'm going to go to John 14. We'll go down here, talking about the wonderful counselor. Go to verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Sounds exactly like what the prophet Isaiah was saying regarding obey the commandments of Yahuwah, right? In Isaiah 8 and 9, what we're reading. And um, Yahusha says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Verse 16, I will pray to the Father and he will give you another counselor that he may be with you forever. It's crazy the way, I don't know if you guys can see this the way I see it, but it sounds contradictory, but there's harmony at the same time. The Father, um, I will pray to the Father, so somebody other than me, and he will give you another counselor, somebody other than me. Somebody other than me and somebody other than the Father. So there's three people being spoken about here. However, it goes, he will give you another counselor that he, who's the he, may be with you forever. It's either talking about the Father or this counselor. Let's say it's the counselor, right? So the counselor is going to be with you forever, right? Verse 17, the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive for it doesn't see him and doesn't know him. You know him for he lives with you. He's talking to his disciples and he will be in you. Verse 18 is the game changer. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. The three different people that are being spoken of is all the same person. Just different, different, it's just different manifestations. It's a different part. You know, that's how I really believe in the oneness. You know, we just discussed Isaiah. Yahuwah is the rock of offense. Yahuwah is the stumbling stone. But we also read Yahusha is the rock of offense. Yahusha is the stumbling stone. 
We're reading about this son that is born of a virgin. His name will be Emmanuel. Yahusha is the one that was born of a virgin. His name is Emmanuel. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. John 1.14, then the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And in the same passage, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's, uh, or maybe it's 10. But there's a passage where disciples are like, show us the Father. Verse 8, John 14, 8, Philip said to him, yeah, uh, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Yahushua said to him, I have, haven't I been with you such a long time and you don't know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father? See, see it, there's this, there's this, there's this oneness, but then there's this separation. There's a lot of this going back and forth. You can't just take the separation passages and run with that to fully uh, identify who Yahusha is and who Yahuwah is. You have to take the whole package, okay? Anyways, I digress on that, and I'm going to let uh, Ezzy go. Go ahead, Ezzy. Yeah, I just wanted to expound on that because in the same chapter, uh, John 14, verse 25, it says, These I have spoken to you while still with you, but the helper, the Ruach HaKadosh, whom the Father shall send in my name, he shall teach you all and remind you all that I said, remind you of all that I said to you. And without, you know, Yahushua fulfilling the Torah, fulfilling that covenant, we wouldn't have that helper. That's, I mean, that's how I see it. So it is all one, but in order for us to have that helper, that helper, in order for us to now be his orphans, that covenant had to be fulfilled. Those commandments had to be fulfilled because we always fall short due to our flesh. Hallelujah. Brother Roy. What you got, brother? You went so many places and I have so many places to go as well. <laughs> Pick it back off, you have about the oneness, connecting it with Isaiah, um, chapter 8, talking about the stumbling block to Israel, understand? This is the pre-revelation of the Most High, how he's going to um, save Israel, punish Israel, and at the same time save them, but his salvation is just being revealed little by little. They don't understand this yet, what's going on? He's going he's gonna to hit them hard right now. He's going to rip him out of the land in a very violent way for a very long time, right? But then he's going to repair them again. But they don't know how this is going to happen. So this, by the time Yeshua comes, understand, this is part of his salvation. They don't know what's going on. And so I like to go um, to put emphasis on that. I'm going to let the Yeshua in Luke, um, when he opens the book, <laughs> When he gives him the scroll, when he's in the uh, uh, um, synagogue, I believe it's Luke 4. Let's go over there. Let me see. Boom. Because this is amazing. Um, Luke 4, 418. And then he reads the pack. If you back up, he, he's, he has the, the spirit, right? He goes to the synagogue, and then they give him a scroll. He opens, and he reads these passages. And he says, um, because because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight of the blind and to send away crushed ones on the release. Now this is the, the I think the web um, translation, but then it says, he's quoting Isaiah. He's quoting Isaiah 61, one, two, three. And he says, he closed the book and he tells them, this scripture right now has been fulfilled in your ears right now. Right? It's amazing. But before he does this, he's being baptized. And when he's being baptized back in Luke, what happens when he, when, when he gets immersed by, by John the Baptist? All right? We read it a little bit a while ago just to say on um, the confirmation of, you see the heavens open. You see a voice saying something. You see your, your, your who shall be baptized and something coming in the form of a dove. The oneness, but yet there is a, um, a connection, but a difference in, in, in the mission. One, you could touch, feel in your 
The other is a spirit that is inside you that is imparted in the day of Pentecost to all the believers. And then you have the Almighty sitting in his throne forever and ever. It's a mystery for us to understand something like this. But it's the way the Most High is, 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 is saving not only Israel, but those who have been grafted in into Israel. So this is, this is amazing. That's what I got to say. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. It's deep, man. It's deep. But we got to reserve this. We will reserve this for our topic of discussion when this comes up. This is going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time. Um, thank you for sharing. Was there anybody else with their hands up? Because I don't see no more hands up, but I thought there was more. Going once, going twice. All right. Back to Isaiah 9, verse 7. <clears throat> of the increase of his government, and of peace, there shall be no end. I don't know of an Israelite, because some people say Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 is, is talking of an Israelite. Which Israelite? Tell me. Where is he? <laughs> you know, I'm talking about non, uh, non-New Testament Israelites, uh, Israelites that claim they don't believe in the New Testament, they don't believe in Yahushua Messiah. They say that Isaiah 9, 6 is not talking about Yahushua the Messiah that we believe in. So I say, who is it talking about then? What description does this fit with what man in history? What Israelite in history? David? Okay, that's good. But David's dead. And scripture says that David's son is going to sit on his throne. I read that today in a different study, Jeremiah chapter 33. If you can change the day from being night, a day from being day and a night from being night, then you can change the covenant Yahoo established with David that his son, he should have a son to sit upon his throne. Okay? So where's that son? Where's that son in history? It's not Benjamin Netanyahu, the one that's in Israel right now. It ain't him. <laughs> I know it ain't him. It can't be him. Anyways. All right. The increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end on David's throne and on his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. I'm sorry, but Benjamin Netanyahu is allowing LGBT parades to go on in Tel Aviv. The biggest LGBT congregating, nasty, filthy, sick, you know, parades that go on in the set apart land of Yahuwah. That's not, so that's not the David I think we're looking for. This man is going to uphold justice and with righteousness from that time on, even forever. Benjamin Netanyahu is aging. He looks like he's aging. He's getting older. He might die someday, just like all of us will. But Yahusha, well, we know he resurrected from the dead and we're expecting him to come back in a resurrected body, in a glorified body. The zeal of Yahuwah of armies will perform this. See, but this is something that they would, this is something that the anti-New Testament Israelites would use on us. They'll say, oh, he came and he died and he didn't rescue nobody from no slavery and no captivity. So he was the false Messiah, right? But they miss, they miss the whole um, him dying for our sins. They missed the covenant restoration, the relationship res restoration. They missed that whole portion. They miss it. Jeremiah 31, Jeremiah chapter three, they missed the bill of divorce and the significance of the bill of divorce. They, they want to ignore the bill of divorce as if the bill of divorce is just metaphoric. It's not literal. That bill of divorce was legit and real. And you're trying to keep covenant with a covenant God with a broken covenant. But Yahusha came as the father. He came to die, resurrect, so that you can enter into covenant relationship with him again. According to Torah. They missed that. It goes right over the head. You got to get the, how can, how can you, what Israel are you going to restore if the covenant is broken and there's a bill of divorce? You're going to save what, 10 people, 100 people? The relationship gets restored first. Then the time that Yahuwah allows all this to take place before he does all this destruction and all this taking over, it's the time for Gentiles 
for the nations and for Israel, the two houses of Israel to be restored, come back into relationship so that when he comes, he's just allowing more time for more people to get in. Praise Yah for that. You know what I'm saying? He's not going to do everything all in one shot. He's, most prophecies were never done that way anyways. You know? But uh, Artis, you got something to add to the table? You're well, uh, yeah, well, I was going to say, it's, 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 it's going to be the, the, same, the same covenant, though. That's why he says you must be born again, because back then, if you read an earlier, earlier, um, of the real actual divorce um, dealing with the people, then the man could not accept his wife back unless she would die, you know, which, which carnally, you know, that wasn't going to happen, but he made a way for that spiritually for us, which we will die to our flesh. And are you referencing Deuteronomy 24? You're talking about Deuteronomy 24 on the, the, bill, of, the, the bill of divorce? Yeah, dealing with the and the woman can't come back, right? If she's divorced right. again, right? But you have to die. So that's why it says that we must kill the flesh, worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why, why the Messiah came as an atonement for us. So it wouldn't be by the blood of now, it's by his blood. But yeah. But Zachariah, I, Zachariah, what is it? Zachariah 12? I always, is it 12? They will look upon me whom they have pierced? Yahoo's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> come on now. Hallelujah. Good stuff, Artis. Thank you. You got the good stuff coming. Come on, bring it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 8, Isaiah 9, 8. And uh, it says here, The Lord sent a word into Yaakov. Again, this is Adonai. I don't know if the Sefer has it different. I'm, I'm not afraid to believe that's Yahuwah, obviously. Yep, Yahuwah sent a word into Yaakov. And it... Ooh, there's different, there's different versions of this one. The web says, uh, Yahuwah sent a word into Yaakov and it falls on Israel. Some other translation says it lights up Israel. I don't know what you guys have. Roy, what you got? I'm reading from Septuagint. Second Septuagint <laughs> is saying the Lord has sent death upon Jacob and has come upon Israel. All right, well... I guess that can kind of make sense with everything that's been spoken so far is a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of calamity. So this is the word that has been sent to Israel. I can see how that will work. I can see how that will work. Anybody got anything different for Isaiah 9, 8? Ezzy, go ahead. Mine says, Yahuwah sent a word against uh, Yaakov, and it has fallen on Yisrael. Okay. Contextually, it seems to make sense. So I think I'll, I think I'll go with that one rather than uh, the web. The web is it's probably saying the same thing, but they're missing, they're missing the, it's like, it's too generic. They say sent a word, you know, it's too generic. But yours translations is making it clear it's a bad word. <laughs> it's a, you know, bad news. Yeah. All right. And it falls on Yisrael. So Yisrael is getting hit. With Yahuwah's discipline, Yahuwah's word, right? Yahuwah's punishment. Verse 9, all the people will know, including Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen, but we will build with cut stone. The, the sycamore fig trees have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. So, okay, Yahuwah, you want to destroy? We'll just cover it up. And do something else. Ezzy, what you got? I see a light bulb. Light bulb moment. I'm going to find it. I'm going to take it back to Revelation. I'm going to find my source. But it talks about during the destruction, the people are rejoicing when the the death, the people are dead and, and the walking dead are, are now not living anymore. They were rejoicing like, oh, yes, the destruction is over. So I'm going to find my source. But All right. Cool, cool, cool. I think I know what you're talking about, too. Nice. I'll give you time for that. But, yeah, so... The arrogance here, including Ephraim. Ephraim will represent the northern kingdom of Israel, which was the worst of the two houses, the northern ten tribes. They did the worst. The priests were the worst. The kings were the worst. That's why they went into captivity first, into Assyrian captivity, and then Yahuda went into Babylonian captivity. 
but uh, I'm going to mute here. There you go. Verse 11, Isaiah 9, 11. Therefore, Yahuwah will set up a, on high against him the adversaries of Rezin and will stir up his enemies, the Syrians in front and the Philistines behind. And they will devour Yisrael with open, with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Wow. Babe, what is the prayer you usually say that Yahuwah will be our front guard and our rear guard? Is there like a passage for that? Because this sounds like the opposite, you know? Instead of Yahuwah being our rear and our front guard, He's allowing these oppressors, these these enemies, to be in front them, in front of them, and behind them. Verse fourteen. Therefore, Yahuwah will cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed, in one day. The elder and the honorable man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. Interesting. I don't know if you guys got something different for verse 15. Ezzy, you got your passage. Go ahead. Um, so it's Revelation 11, uh, 9. And this is after, um, this is after basically, I think it's the fifth messenger or the sixth messenger, the sixth trumpet has sounded. And um, those those men that were left behind to be tortured for five months by the authority of, of I think his name is Abaddon, which basically means destruction. Um, those those priests or those uh, messengers have now been killed or done away with. So it says in verse nine and some of the peoples and tribes and tongues and nations see their dead bodies for three and a half days and do not allow their dead bodies to be placed into tombs. And those dwelling on the earth rejoice over them and exult, and they shall send gifts to each other because these two Nabim tortured these dwellings on the earth. So they were rejoicing over the death and destruction or what seemed to be the death and destruction being done away with and being prideful instead of once again, not repenting because there's still one more trumpet <laughs> you know, left before you're not able to repent. Mm. So. That was a connection. It connects. Right there in your, in your heart, where your heart is at in that revelation right now. As I see you. For those who lead this people, led them astray. And those who are led by them are destroyed. Therefore, Yahuwah will not rejoice over their young men. Neither will he have compassion on their fatherless widows. For everyone is profane and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. That's pretty deep. Over their young men. It almost sounds uh, generational. Neither will he have compassion on their, on their fatherless and the widows. For everyone is profane and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all, his, all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire. I thought we were going to get good news in this chapter. We got a little bit of good news. We got a little bit of good news in the beginning, but it's still going. This is still going bad. Uh, for wickedness burns like a fire, it devours the briars and thorns. Yes, it kindles in the thick thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through Yahuwah of armies' wrath, the land is burned up, and the people are the fuel for the fire. Wow. No one spares his brother. One will devour on the right hand and be hungry, and he will eat on the left hand, and they will not be satisfied. Everyone will eat the flesh of his own arm. Manashe, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manashe. So they would devour one another. Sounds like the two houses again. Maybe Manashe is a representation of the southern kingdom, perhaps, because I know Ephraim is the northern kingdom. And they together shall be against, nope, my bad. Manashe and Ephraim seem to be the, the northern kingdom. 
maybe different parts of the northern kingdom. And, and they together shall be against Yahuda. Wow. So there's beef amongst Israelites, amongst their own people. They're going to be devouring one another. Wow. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Wow. Ezzy, what you got? I'm just going to say that eight through nine mirrors exactly what's going to happen in Revelation eight through 11. Mm -hmm. And his, and I think it's important to emphasize that he says his hand is still stretched out still like despite all of this, he is still saying, you know, come to me, turn from your ways, come to me. So, I mean, that just, that encompasses the character of our Abba. It's like his long suffering and his patience. I mean, he could easily, he could have just finished this whole story a long time ago. You know what I mean? Finished it, have the end times done, the judgment day, everything's done. It's still prolonging. It's not prolonging because he's a procrastinator. It's prolonged because he's patient. That's good news. That's good news. Artis. I'm just, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just loving what, what, what she's saying. His hand is stretched out still. I mean, yeah, it's, it seems like a very bad, you know, situation that's going to take place. But the good thing is you can continue to smile because his hand is stretched out still. That's the thing that I was focused on. His hand is stretched out still. The issue, the issue, the issue I know that a lot of people is going to have in them times is trying to figure out whether – you're someone's name who's written inside the book of life or not. It says everybody must work out their own salvation in fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Why does he say that? We have to understand that the most high, he knows. He knows who's going to do what. He knows. He knows all. But the issue with it is we don't. So we can guess, <laughs> you know, but he knows. Regardless of what anybody want to say, he knows, but we don't. So that's the power that we have. He gave us the power of decision. That's why we must continue and working toward, working toward, you know, the goodness of Yah. You know, and don't just sit there and get comfortable in any aspect. Trust me, when if you get too comfortable, then there's a problem. They say when a storm seems like it's too light, then there must be something coming. So we must work out our salvation in fear and trembling and make sure that our election is sure. Because guess what? Regardless of the matter, his hand is stretched out still. Um. Praise y'all, brother. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing, man. That was great. Ezzy, you got more? I was just going to say, you said there was no good news, but Yahusha is the good news. When, the, yes. when he talks about in verse 9, uh, 6, that's the good news, you know, in all of this destruction, there is a counselor, there is a comforter, we have the Ruach HaKadosh, so that is the good news, and I think that there's just a small excerpt, because in his word, I have to find where it is, but in the excerpt, um, in the scriptures, it says that he came to us not because we were great, but because we were few. So that's why I think that it's just a small section where it talks about that counselor. Because if we have a whole chapter on the goodness of Yahushua, we'll never get to that stumbling rock. We'll never get to that fallen place. So just one. Hallelujah. That. Well said. Well said. Amen. Amen. Any last words, guys? Good job for enduring this round. I think we're going to end it there. We got two chapters in for this portion. Uh, shalom. We'll see you guys next time. Shabbat shalom.